Let me tell you a story about a major league player who had a career month by thinking knock over the pitcher on no matter what pitch was being thrown to him. And it's wild because you watch the highlights that he actually put up those that month, and he's hitting balls in the gap, he's hitting home runs, he's hitting doubles, he's hitting singles. But we actually don't know what was going on in his, on his in his head to create those results. So let's kind of dive deep into this. Let me tell you a story about what kind of happened with me in college. So I was at a junior college, leading the team in home runs, cool, whatever, right? And my hitting coach, he brought over myself and a couple other hitters to the batting cages. And we had a batting cage that was at the top of a basketball gym, and you could lower it. You turn the key, lower it, lower it. And instead of stopping at the standard height, he kept on lowering it. He told me to get in the cage and get to my finish. And wherever my finish stopped, that's where he lowered it. And it was like super low ceiling. It felt like I was in a, a, a really small basement, right? And I was like, what the heck is this? Like, what are we doing? And uh, he just said, keep the ball off the top of the cage. And he's just screaming at us. I was like, Okay. And you know, as like a high school or college player, like, man, this dude's just being an old head. He's being an idiot. I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. But we, we look back and I, and it's like, all right, he was right. Like keep the ball off the top of the cage. And it's like, okay, but like, how about stop being mean and just let me hit, keep hitting bombs and let me get to the next level. So, and I think about it and it's like, all right, he was right, but he was super wrong on how he communicated it. If he would have sat me down or sat us down and said, Hey, when you, guys, when you guys are right, you guys hit bombs. But when you guys aren't right, you guys are top spinning, you're flying off, swing and missing. It's not as competitive. If you guys want to get, get to the next level, and by thinking hit the ball lower when you train, it's going to keep your front shoulder down. It's going to keep that barrel up a little bit higher. You're going to get a lot, a lot less swing and miss. You're going to help the team more. You're going to help yourself more. Your average is going to go up. And it's like, man, I love this. Yeah, let's do this. And if you would have finished off and said, hey, by train hit the ball low, you're going to get all those attributes and characteristics to help you and the team. And also, it's probably going to help you hit more bombs. Like, man, I'm all in. Let's do this. Let's hit the ball low, low, low. No top cage, no top cage. But since you didn't set us down and actually talk to us about how it could actually help, we just went, nah, we're going to do what we want. We're going to keep on hitting bombs. We might try to hit it a little bit low, but like, we're still going to try to hit bombs. We didn't know actually why it would help us. We just thought he was being mean, right? So college, if you're a coach, if you're a parent, if you're a player, whatever, you have to understand or you have to teach to understand why it's actually going to help them. Don't let them think you're just being mean. You just want to show your authority or your enforcement on an authority. Show them why it's actually going to help them get to the next level or get to the next level or actually benefit them or the team. And it's the whole thing. It's like, all right, what do you want from this? I want to get to the next level. All right, if you want to get to the next level, you got to be able to hit the ball lower and be more competitive and less swing and miss. It's like, okay, how do we do that? Well, you got to train to hit the ball lower. It's like, yep, I'm all in. I'm all in. So it's like, all right, we got to figure out what motivates them. How can we get them to figure out what motivates them? Yes, I just said that. But uh, then how can we achieve that? It's like, all right, uh, some players need to hit the ball higher. Hey, if you want to get to the next level, you got to hit the ball higher. We're going to go all top cage. All right, if you want to get to the next level, you got to swing and miss more. It's like, all right, why do I swing and miss? Because I miss under. So it's like, I need to train hit the ball lower. It's like, all right, that's going to get you to the next level. I'm all in. Getting the players to understand the buy-in factor of like, all right, not just buying into what I want. How about we buy into them? What do they actually want? I want to get to the next level. I want to swing, swing and miss less. I want to produce more runs. How do we do that? You got to hit the ball lower. You got to train lower in the cage. Like, all right, I'm bought in. We got to figure out what motivates them. We got to figure out what they need and then their help. And we can actually figure out how we can make a um, a really good partnership of, hey, I'm not the boss. Um, you're the hitter. Like, I'm enforcing everything. No. How can we actually help them? What can get them to the next level? And how can we get them to buy in to what actually can help them? Not just t- showing them that you're the boss. And I talked to him and I said, hey, when you, when you think front shoulder down, hit the ball low, it's going to allow you to hit more doubles and triples. It's going to allow you to actually hit the balls further and longer um, and produce more doubles and triples. And it's like, hey, that's what I want, right? So it's like, okay, why do I need to do this? Because sometimes naturally you swing uphill, your front shoulder works up and or you miss under the ball simply because your aim. A lot of players are the exact same way. Sometimes it's, it's one or the other. Sometimes it's both. My job as the hitting coach is to understand, all right, what's actually causing it and how, how can we fix it right away so you can have longer hot streaks and, and shorter cold streaks, right? So um, naturally, probably 90, 95% of the players, they do one or the other. They miss under because of the uppercut and they drop their backside just a little bit, or they miss under simply because of their aim. Their swing might be perfectly on plane or whatever term you want to use, but simply their aim is low on the field. Um, so some players, they're actually both. Sometimes, sometimes they are uphill. Sometimes they are missing under with their aim. So they're like focusing on the bottom part of the ball too much. And so, okay, when you think more Freddie Freeman, right, this is 99% of the play, 90, 90 to 95% of the players, not everyone. I've had some players who need to think uphill just because they naturally work downhill. So I don't want you to think I'm teaching this to everyone, but 99% of the players, they miss under. 
right? They miss under whether it was because their swing or their aim. So it's like, okay, what is it and how can we fix it so we can get hotter quicker? So this player, we look at him and it's like, all right, he naturally works uphill. He's a short, he's a short, uh, quick twitch player and he wants to yank those shoulders for bass speed. But when he thinks keep that front shoulder down, the more, the less the shoulders move for him, the faster his hands look and play. The faster his front shoulder is, the slower that his hands can play or they look like they can play. Therefore, the, when he, when he, when this front shoulder is fast, his hands look slow. It looks like the, he's swinging underneath, under, uh, underneath water. But when he thinks front shoulder down, his hands can actually play. And he's got a lot quicker hands. He can play the game much better simply because he's staying on the ball much longer and he has, he has faster hands, right? So. Okay, now let's watch this video. Now let's also look at this picture. This picture is very, very important. So um, I have this, so in my cage, in my facility, obviously depending on where they're hitting, sometimes we move up, sometimes we scoot back. I mix up the depth. Uh, I've measured on my rap soto, I hate saying the word, but I've measured the launch angle or the angle the ball comes off the bat. And to a certain extent, obviously we've seen the science. If you hit the ball this high or this, this hard and this far, it goes a certain distance, right? Um, so I've measured it and it's like, all right, if you hit it at this certain angle and it lands on this part of the turf, um, that means you hit it around this angle, or if you hit it, blah, 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 and it doesn't get past this certain line on the turf, that means you hit it too high. Um, obviously once you start hitting the ball harder, you can start hitting the ball higher because that's the further it's going to go. But for, for the common player to a certain extent, if they hit the ball under five, under 95 mile an hour, they can't the ball at a certain angle because it's just going to be a pop-up depending on where they hit it on the field. Right? So I don't want to get too complicated in that, but so we have a line in the cage. Depending on where they're hitting, where they're hitting, it doesn't count for a barrel unless it lands past a certain line. And I take this picture is because I have a line on the cage and it's like, all right, we need to figure out how to hit the ball lower, harder, more often because we look at a lot of these balls and they're not landing past the line. Your common miss, it was three players in the facility in the cage, your common miss is under, 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 right? 90, 90, 90 to 95% of the players, that's their miss. So it's like, all right, I want you to think about this visual Think about the back wall in the in the cage is on a slider, right? It's on it's on a slider, right? It's one big wall. Think about it, the brick wall or net wall, whatever. It's on a slider. I want you to think, hit it harder off that brick wall or off that wall, and it pushes the wall back. Push, push, hit it harder, push, push, push. And when they started doing that, they had their best rounds. And they actually had really good mechanics, like their front shoulder stayed down longer. They're way more competitive on their misses, which is huge, right? We want to be more competitive on our misses. Uh, the Texas Rangers are huge on that as well. How many hits, when we're off, how many hits can we still get at 80, 90% or 80 or 90 miles an hour, 70 mile an hour? Because we have good angles and we're not flying, but we're not flying off or we're not popping it up. How many times can we get the ball through the infield or over the infield? Uh, when we're not on, when we're not perfect. And that's, they lead the league in hits, runs, everything, right? So that's the goal. How good can we be when we're bad? By thinking front shoulder down and thinking hit the ball low, it makes your misses way more competitive, right? It might not be a, a home run, but like at least it's still a single. At least it still gets a chance. At least it still moves the, moves the, moves the runners around the bases. That's the goal. And coaches, college coaches, high school coaches, pro coaches, they all love that because it keeps the energy going. It keeps, it keeps everything going. Um, and I always talk to a lot of college players, a lot of college coaches, um, high school coaches, all of those. And I'm like, all right, what are you looking for? We want more competitive hitters, not necessarily with the mindset, more with their misses. We want to figure out how good they can be when they're, when they're slightly off, or are they just going to hit pop-ups, pop-ups pop all day, and hopefully that they show up better the next game or the next day. It's like, no, I want the player who's really good competitively mentally, but also physically. He doesn't just throw in the towel when he just barely misses. He, he can still figure out how to get the job done with a one-arm swing or butt-out swing or whatever and still get it through or over the infield, and that's the goal. So thinking front front shoulder down longer and barrel up higher or hit the ball lower, it's going to make you way more competitive in the zone, way more competitive for your team, more runs, more hits, more scholarship, more money, whatever your next level motivation is, it's really going to help you. And it's most importantly, it's going to help you help you have more fun because now you're helping the team. Now you're actually getting on base, which is, which is super fun.